It's genius. Love it. Oh. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> But we actually, besides talking about the happy tales here that we were just discussing, we have a real reason for being here today with all of you. And that is the question of when you think about getting a labradoodle, what is the right type of labradoodle for you? And, and what does that family. mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially when it pertains to coat types, because mm -hmm. a lot of people have questions about that. Um, and there definitely is different labradoodle coat types. So um, that's kind of what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. So just to give everyone an overview, there's basically generally accepted, because I don't want to get too complicated here, three coat types. Yes, there is the flat coat. Mm -hmm. um, there is, and this is like the generic name that makes it real easy for everyone. You've got the flat coat, you've got the wavy coat, and you've got the curly coat. Okay. Um, but people, when they're Google searching, you know everybody loves to do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> yes, you're you're also going to see it stated a little bit differently. Um, okay. The hair coat is the flat one. Okay. And the wavy one is fleece. Okay. So now it sounds like we're talking about sheep. Exactly. <laughs> and just to make it more sheep-like, the curly one is wool. So hair, fleece, wool. Hair, fleece, wool. Flat, wavy, curly. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are the professional terms, and you'll find those on Google. And those are... I guess the terms that we'll be going by. Yeah, here. They're, they're all interchangeable as far yeah. as I'm concerned. They're all interchangeable. So. We're just here to have fun. Yeah, it's all exactly. good. It's all good. So uh, let us know in the comments below what your favorite coat type is. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the the benefits of each of those and Absolutely. what the differences are and, and what that means for your family, for both time wise, grooming schedule wise, and it all plays, all, in. It all plays in. It's so. an important question to consider mm -hmm. if you're thinking about getting a labradoodle because <laughs> it will, it'll affect things. Yeah. It affects the whole yeah. experience as to mm -hmm. what it's going to be for you and your And family. there are some misconceptions out there, so hopefully we'll break some of those today and you'll walk True. away with, with a bit more education and knowing the, the perfect dog type for you. And speaking of misconceptions, that's actually a great place to get started. Okay, great. Um, the very first coat type that we mm -hmm. mentioned, the hair coat or the okay. flat coat. The flat coat, okay. That one has some misconceptions tied to it. Um, so first of all, when people think of Labradoodles, they think of the cute, fuzzy teddy bear. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Not you, all We know you're on Instagram <laughs> looking up those cute little squishy puppies. Yes, not, mm -hmm. not all Labradoodles come out that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ones that have those flat coats, uh, they can look very similar to a lab. Um, it's especially common to see these in what's called, and you're going to hear us reference generations a lot, so just bear with me here. Um, we have another video yesterday that actually talked about generations if you want more info. But the F1 generation of Labradoodles, which that stands for half lab, half poodle. In that generation, it is very common to see these flat coats. Not that you won't get other coats too, but you definitely right. see that. Um, People kind of sometimes divert away from that. I've seen in my experience for like two main reasons. Mm -hmm. One, they're just not the image they have in their mind of what a Labradoodle is supposed to look like. Right. Um, but the other reason is because sometimes you can get some shedding with those flat coats and okay. people definitely look into Labradoodles for that hypoallergenic non-shed coat. Um, things that people don't always understand about the flat coats is that they can still be very low shed sometimes. And because they're kind of discovering that the shed is not necessarily what causes the allergies, that it can actually be, a lot of studies show the dander. Ah, uh -huh, there we go, yes. everybody. Mm -hmm. It's the dander you're allergic to, not the shedding of the fur. These dogs are going to be low dander. Uh, low to no dander. dander. To no so dander. that's good, yeah. very, very hypoallergenic and that's, mm -hmm. Now, Why you don't ever want to guarantee enough. any yes. dogs 100% right. hypoallergenic because technically... Especially the F1 you know, generation. Yeah, F1s. And that's right. the thing. You'll find a lot of inexpensive Labradoodles mm -hmm. out there. They're usually the F1s. And the thing is, they're inexpensive for a reason. They're a real yes. toss-up. You don't know what you're getting Absolutely. at that generation. And usually the flat coats at that generation shed a lot. In fact, we got Nismo back here that Andrew is is loving on <laughs> and you can tell he looks a whole lot like a lab he's an f1 generation half and half he is definitely a flat coat and let me tell you in his case he does shut he definitely right. sheds but again 
if you get one of these, you have a dog that traditionally sheds less than a lab. And if your family, if that's what they're looking for, um, I'll tell you, I was in a relationship with a guy once who he wouldn't admit to anyone that Nismo was a Labradoodle. He told everyone he was a lab because he was the macho guy. Where, you know, you can't, you cannot have, can't have a, cute a Labradoodle if you're a guy. Okay, right, that was right. the, the idea oh, he was goodness. coming from. So for all you men out there who want a dog that sheds a little bit less, but you want to say you have a lab, there you go. There's a purpose it's for the an, flat hairs. And, yeah. and it, it, this is a very good point that it is very important to know and ask those questions oh, okay. when you are considering getting a Labradoodle yes. to know what generation it is because mm -hmm. that's going to tell you so much information about both parents yes. and what you could expect from that litter. Well, and actually, as a prime example and of that. the breeder would know that. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I, I would hope that. they do. <laughs> yes, so you consult a professional oh, like Christina. Yes. <laughs> she knows all of her dogs. Oh, yes. So yes. it's an important detail. You, you don't want to be giving people a disservice. Absolutely. It's important that you're educating your customers for what's best for their life. So, I mean, Rosie, for example, she's actually a flat coat too, but she is an F1B. And so she looks different than Nismo and she sheds less than he does. She basically doesn't shed. I mean, for all intents and purposes, yeah. she's pretty much shed free. So it's pretty phenomenal. Um, but that's probably enough about flat coats for the moment. <laughs> Don't want to overwhelm yeah. people. They're probably excited to hear about this fleece and wool. Yes. Uh, okay, the so the so more our... traditional lab, yes. labradoodles. Yes. Um, arguably, the fleece coat might be the most yeah. common Labradoodle coat really to see. Okay. Um, and we talked about that's wavy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing about that one is how it's gonna affect, say, the hypoallergenic aspect will still depend on generation two. Okay. So if you're looking at, say, the F1 generation, it's still probably gonna shed, just like a flat does. Uh, by the time you, time you meet, meet that, get to oh goodness <laughs> it's been a long day and it's not even friday yet i know i know We're by the there. time you get to the f1b generation which is a 75 percent poodle 25 percent lab okay. there's still only a 50 50 chance on really whether and that's of course arguably so but 50 50 chance on whether that dog is going to shed um, that's why, honestly, like mm -hmm. I, I find it interesting. A lot of people really seek out that F1B generation because that's what they're used to hearing about. Mm -hmm. That's what they kind of equate with a Labradoodle. Exactly. And that's not true of everyone, but that's that's kind of what I've seen in a lot of the times. Um, the F1BB generation, and we have and litters of puppies coming up that are F1BB. F1BB, so that yeah. is that's breeding that F1B back, to, back, a back to a poodle. poodle. Yeah, that's that's really where you get a lot more of what you could almost consider a guarantee, if anything in life is a guarantee. To that, to that wavy curly. Yeah, to, to yes. either the fleece or the wool coat. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're gonna get really, really smart puppies. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, all the Labradoodles Tricks are smart. Tricks and puzzles. Honestly, and I mean, I gotta give both they labs are. and yeah. poodles credit. They're, They're smart dogs. They're pretty smart. Yeah, they pretty so, smart. yeah, so, I mean, the poodle, for example, considered the second smartest dog in the world by many mm -hmm. people. The labs oftentimes thought of as the seventh. So, I mean, you're getting a really good dog with a Labradoodle. You really are. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, now, the wool coats. The, the wool coat, the traditional wavy, which we know to be Elmo, right? Elmo. Oh. And, and not so much Elmo. wavy as kind of curly. Kind of curly. This is here Elmo. we go. Come here, baby boy. Oh, my goodness. We're gonna we're gonna visit with Elm up here for a minute. <laughs> He's got his ball in his mouth. <laughs> Do you He's still so have your ball? There. You have your ball. Oh, you're gonna give it to me? That's so sweet of you. Do you want it back? He's no. Like, no. No. <laughs> He'll do it. As you can tell, Labradoodles are very mild mannered. Yes. I can do anything with this dog. I know. He's they so are sweet. So sweet. Oh, you want the ball, Rosie? She's jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, definitely, you can see you can see a huge difference between this flat hair coat and this this curly one with yes. this wool coat. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, if you are someone that has allergies and and it's severe to a point where you really need the closest thing to a guarantee, mm -hmm. that's probably your absolute best bet is to get the wool. Get the wool. Um, Wavy is really not far behind. That mm -hmm. that with the right generation is a super good one for for shedding dander issues but this wool is just awesome. But we talked about that this also goes into what's good for your family, and it's exactly. not just the hypoallergenic it's, aspect. Yeah, that's just there's, the hypoallergenic. That's just one part of it. So what are we looking at grooming-wise for? Well, I'll be honest um, with you. We're looking at a dog that's ready to get groomed right now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, he's kind of, yeah, there we go. he's kind yeah. of, uh, 
He's ready. So, um, but that's the thing about the wool coats, especially, and and even the fleece coats. Um, they do need to be groomed a lot more often. These two dogs right here, <laughs> we don't even have to take the flat coats to the groomer. We just give them baths ourselves. They so don't get that trimmed. That's a great or anything. benefit for families who are a bit busier, have multiple children, yes. multiple young children. That yes. is, you know, very minimal brushing, uh, grooming, or taking to the groomer. So that is a really amazing benefit. Oh, it's a great. Real, really great, like dog, full dog. Right, yes. Oh yeah, I agree completely because my life is, is super busy. So yes. I love having the straight haired ones around because it's less work, it's less cost. I mean, every right. time you're going right. to the groomer, you could be looking at 45 to $75 to get yeah. those dogs Just trimmed. Just get a little Roomba yes. and have that sucker go around your house. And yeah, these days they make that so simple. Oh, no. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> <That's a robot. laughs> yeah, definitely. But the thing is, there is downsides if you don't get a fleece or a wool coat trimmed often enough. And, and so that's your way to be curly. Yeah, you're only looking at maybe every eight to ten weeks. It mm -hmm. depends on the dog. It depends on what you're doing with them. If they're going to the lake a lot, that sort of thing. Uh, but if you don't, their coats really could mat up. Whereas yeah. this, there's nothing to mat on him. I right. mean, he's just exactly. beginner he's just level all the way. complete brush out and yeah. completely happy. Absolutely. So you're looking at a bit more grooming with that fleece to wool coat. So but that's you're getting better, better, better guarantees on the hypoallergenic side. Yes. So hopefully that gives you a determining factor of what might be good for your family. Maybe it's a wavy, maybe it's middle of the road. You get right. the, kind of the best of both worlds. And it is true that there's, it's really steps. Because even though the fleece and the wool, you want to get them groomed about the same amount mm -hmm. of time, mm -hmm. um, your daily work is different. So the fleece wavy ones, you're really only having to groom, um, I'm sorry, brush yourself maybe once a week. Right. Um, when you get into the curly ones, yeah, those wool that ones, wool coat, it's, it's considered be, like twice a week to maybe every day. Yeah. You yes. know, it just depends on again on the dog. And part of the reason it depends is because there are some intermixing. Sometimes you get kind of a fleece wool. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's different textures to these coats. So right. none That's of what I'm video. saying is a hard and fast <laughs> rule, okay? This yeah, is your exactly. basic generic get you started information. Exactly. And what I would honestly defer to you is if you do get one that does have a bit more maintenance is listen to your groomer. Yes. Please, please, please listen to your groomer. There are they certain know. rules that you need to understand <laughs> to make your life easier. To make your life easier and your dog more comfortable and happy and yeah. healthy, it's important to listen to your groomer. Happy dog, happy owner. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, they are like everyone's children. They're extended families. So we want to make sure that they're well taken care of. It's very true. Absolutely. There is one other point people should think about, though. Okay. Yes. What's that? When they're picking out their puppy, we're telling them all about these different coat types, yes. but it would be unfair if I didn't throw in the mix the fact that what the coat type looks like when it's a puppy. Ah, so here's the little bonus <laughs> tip for you. Yes, is not necessarily what the coat type will look like as an adult. Right. Um, it's telling. So okay. breeders, definitely, you want to consult your breeders to ask them, hey, with what this puppy puppy looks like right now, what do you expect And it sounds like a good breeder it? would tell you. That's where you yes. want a breeder that's experienced. You want them to be able to try and help you to determine that, mm -hmm. what that, that coat is going to look like as an adult. Because they change. It's at about a year's age, sometimes a little before, those puppies are going to start shedding out um, that coat. And especially with the fleece and wool, it's really important at that point that you take them to the groomers yes. um, because where they have the poodle lineage poodles actually have human hair basically yes. and what that means is that hair is not shedding out on the ground around you that's why people love the fleece and the wool so much they're just not shedding everywhere but it's but getting it's stuck in there back into the fur and that's where you get the matting yes so at that age it's very critical that very you take important. them and it's critical that you be brushing them yeah. regularly and once you get past that you get this awesome surprise of this beautiful adult coat and you just have yourself a brand new dog yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful i love it so consider that puppy that is um up until what a year year and a half right it's kind of um like you would equate with baby teeth yeah it's you know, the same kind of idea it's the same kind of idea i guess and that there's depending on the generation of the dog, yes. then, uh -huh. depends on what you're gonna get. And yes. a good breeder is going to know all that information, disclose all that information to you, and help educate you as well. So that's really important, and Christina is really wonderful about that. This woman 
does her research. <laughs> she knows about her Labradoodles and her dogs. So highly recommend asking her any questions you might have in the comments below. Um, if you can think of anything else that you want to know about Labradoodles. We just, just want people to, to make the best decision, decision for, for them and for the dogs. And we want what's right for the dogs too. A Absolutely. family that's ready to take on that responsibility. We love it. Yes. Yes. So thank you for tuning in. Like and share this video if it was helpful. Yes, Definitely please. comment below if you have any questions about Labradoodles or you want to know more Labradoodle information in Absolutely. the next video. We might even do a live Q&A. You, you never, never know. know. <laughs> <Jinx>. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. Hope this was helpful for everyone and make sure to like the lovely little Labradoodles Facebook page so you can stay tuned to a lot of new content and puppy pictures coming Yay. up. We're excited Puppies about it. Puppies June. More pictures to come. Yes, so stay tuned. We'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks.